I think uh, the question, how it is nicely written here, globally and regionally, how does it fit together, I think is an extremely important question. Listening to the questions before, especially religion, politics, education, and so on and so on, I might say it's a little bit a change of the subject going in another direction. Uh, for this, we would need, on the one side, more time. On the other side, I think uh, it's also extremely necessary that we are continuing what we have already started. So I have to apologize, but it was decided by the organizers that I shall do this input. Maybe it's one of the incoming themes. Why? Because we have in general a development uh, which is uh, going globally, uh, technically, uh, uh, by research, uh, by communication, by ecological matters, and so on and so on. But on the other side, uh, I want to remember you, we started the United Nations in 1945 with 48 members. Now we have 200, uh, and it might be more in the next time because all these bigger entities are breaking into pieces. So far, globally, regionally, in which direction is this going? Second level, which is a difference, I think in the meanwhile, uh, we created politically uh, uh, new institutions. The outstanding example is the European Union, because it's not a state. Uh, it is a new kind of association, uh, even by international law, it's an entity uh, newly created, and there's no other example until now existing, but you can see there are a lot of efforts to, well, to develop similar things and so on and so on. We are getting here different levels. Uh, the third connotation which I have to, uh, we have a certain tendency, it started mainly by the downfall of the Iron Curtain, because if you look to the map uh, in the time before the Iron Curtain and you look to the map of Europe today, I think you have a number of states. Uh, I think uh, it was easy in previous time to know what is a capital from. Uh, I think now it's difficult. If we are doing here a questionnaire, uh, you will see uh, the number of capitals has increased because the number of states as uh, for sure, uh, here increased. And we are not at the end of the development. We have to, sure, we have to say quite surely. Uh, I give you some primitive examples. It's very primitive. How long will be the United Kingdom and United Kingdom if Scotland is going separately? First question. What about our Catalanian friends concerning Spain? I'm not quite sure that the Constitutional Court will be able for a long time uh, to uh, handle this kind of separatism which for sure existing. We have for sure other dividing lines and it is always a result of development uh, existing here. Personally, I'm convinced uh, that the composition of Russia uh, might create in the next 50 years uh, a lot of new states. Because if you are listening to the Pashkirs or, or whatever, they are not feeling as Russians. I think we have some uh, simple explanations uh, of unity which are not uh, really existing. I think differentiation is more existing. One direction, other direction, we need more unity by creating more entities which are together to settle our problems. I think here it is a real battle in between there's an institution which is very important, especially for Europe, but in consequence for other parts of the world, which was created by the French Revolution at the time afterward, the so-called nation state. The nation state is still, by law and so on and so on, one of the basics for sure existing. As an Austrian, I may tell you, it's quite difficult to understand this Austria and nation state. Uh, because we are speaking a language which is also present in Germany, even in a greater number. There is one nice definition uh, by a famous writer in Austria, Germans and Austrians are speaking the same language, and that's a difference. Uh, here you can see what is here really existing, and it is improving in this direction by also the historical background existing. I was focusing mainly on Europe by explanation. I can guarantee you 
the first development uh, in Africa, for example, will also create new borders, new entities, new nation states, because by colonialism, these countries were put together which are not really together. One of the problems, for example, of the horrible situation in the Middle East was the not very clever decisions uh, done uh, by the Foreign and Commonwealth Office in London and by K2C in France, because all these borders are artificial. Huh? I think uh, those uh, who are able to read German and are out of an elderly generation like me, I'm always wondering that the British never were reading Karl May. Because if they would have read Karl May, there's one volume from uh, Baghdad to Istanbul. Uh, here you can experience who is living in what we are calling now Iraq. I think now we are suffering by the fact that in the north you have Kurds, uh, you have uh, Shia, and you have Sunni, and you have even Yazidi, uh, and so on and so on. And it's going on in this direction. Therefore, this is regional development uh, which is here in the title. But on the other side, I think we have the strong request of a closer global cooperation. I think uh, it's further on more developed in the direction of uh, uh, ecology, besides the fact that Donald Trump uh, is saying uh, ecology is not so important, we have no problem. Huh? Here you can see what is really coming up. It is a substantial question uh, which is here. I think we have a tendency to create more division lines. Uh, a primitive example being close to, to this region, the division lines between Germany and Austria are now re-established. My beloved German friends are controlling the borders to Austria and vice versa, now in a tougher way concerning the refugees. Huh? Uh, I think here you can see which development is going. We have Schengen on the one side, but on the other side everybody, especially my beloved ministers of interior, want to lift Schengen because they are more important and more powerful and they can control uh, and so on and so on. Don't underestimate this. We are sometimes saying, ah, it might be passed by in the moment, and so on and so on. No, no, it's creating a lot of uh, behaviors going also in this uh, uh, direction, also connected with prejudges uh, we are regaining. Uh, I have the advantage to be an oldie. May I say, uh, what I'm feeling horrible is that the prejudges are coming back. There was a certain time of Europeanization where the prejudges were going a little bit down. Now they are coming up because we want to be on distance. Uh, the real medium of politics is now to build up fences and walls, uh, which is really horrible, by the way. Uh, I learned by history uh, the biggest uh, wall ever erected uh, is the Chinese wall uh, here. But I think uh, to keep out those invaders, it didn't work. The Mongolians came and were for centuries in charge of the Chinese empire. I think uh, this is an extremely important thing. Why was I proposing this theme? Concerning cultural diplomacy. What are the ways uh, to come over? I think some might say economy, because in business we are cooperating we are using still very nationalistic phrases, uh, but the reality is quite different. In deep respect uh, to Germany, I'm always uh, deeply impressed listening to the news uh, of the German TV. Uh, here is reported the German car industry being so strong and so on and so on. How strong is the German car industry? Uh, I think uh, the majority of the shares of BMW, Mercedes, and so on and so on are partly owned on others, the Gulf countries, and so on and so on. The production of the German cars are quite huge in China, India, and so on and so on. And if you're looking to your car having a German title, Volkswagen or Mercedes or BMW or whatever, uh, the components of the cars are coming out of different parts. Here you have global cooperation in a certain way always interpreted in a national way or even in a regional way. I think here you see this difference and the political system, and it was the reason why I was mentioning uh, the word nation state, is still uh, acting in another direction. Uh, I'm a lawyer by uh, education. May I say our legal system is still based on the nation state. 
But the reality in which we are living, I think, is by international connection. Sometimes it's coming up, sometimes it's creating uh, problems. It is a quite interesting system that uh, all these communication we are able to do uh, by the modern computer world in which we are living is suffering by this way of the global possibility of interference, hackers. Huh? But we are not able to handle it nationally because we have no global answer on this. I think activities uh, in favor uh, to disturb the global system are really working. Activities working to create a global system where you can control it, where you can protect it, and so on and so on, are for sure not existing. Here we are still at the national level uh, with a lack of capacity, I think, to handle it in the right direction. That's one of the huge questions uh, in which we are. And may I say, and I am very critical, we are not even discussing it. We are not even discussing it. I think, for example, the hate speech, which is uh, now possible uh, by internet, by all the possibilities, uh, social media, and so on and so on, we are not able to handle it globally. Huh? I think we are trying to make some uh, regional, national solutions, forbidden it. We have to ask uh, uh, the companies doing it globally, can you put it out for my country, uh, what the matter with the others, uh, and so on and so on. I think here is a huge deficit for sure existing. And this is a question where we have to work on this mutual understanding. You might say, okay, there are a lot of political instruments uh, globally, but to speak quite frankly, in the days of Aleppo, uh, for what was the United Nations really able to do on this subject? Nothing. If I'm looking to the Council of Europe, the difficulties in the Ukraine were not even mentioned. They were not on the agenda, uh, because uh, I think the Russians are influencing the agenda. They've hindered everything, that it is not really happening. Here you can see where the difficulties are, and I want to repeat, uh, concerning the borders in Africa, partly in Asia, we will get a lot of problems here, because division lines will be even more. And the real question and challenge is, and here we are in the right place concerning cultural diplomacy, are we able to overcome these division lines and in which way? How is mutually understanding uh, really working? Uh, which kind of knowledge is here existing? Rightly before, especially concerning religion, education was managed. I was in charge uh, for some years uh, for the stability back in Southeast Europe to improve the situation after the four horrible wars we had in the Balkans. I think I was always fighting, and I failed totally, uh, with the member states of the European Union that we have to do an input in the Balkans on education. I may tell you, we did a lot concerning infrastructure, energy, uh, judicial system, and so on and so on, with some success. We were not able to do anything on education. But what is still staying, I think the hatred between nations, uh, and so on and so on, the prejudges, uh, and so on and so on. I think I'm in charge of the Center for Democracy and Reconciliation in Southeast Europe. What did we do? We did the uh, famous joint history book project. Uh, what was done? We compared the history books of the different countries uh, to see how history is interpreted. And may I say, it is really horrible that you can read it. What did we do? Not writing a common history for the Balkans, that's really impossible, because Winston Churchill has already said uh, the Balkans have more history as they can consume. Uh, what we try to do is to confront the different perceptions of history one after each other. And if you are reading this together, I think, and it is a small region, uh, the Balkans, uh, you can do it globally, and you can see here the problem, culture. Because culture is not only, I think, opera house and theater and, co and so on and so on. Culture is mutual understanding, uh, which for sure here is existing. And I think what we have to do in this uh, tension between globally and regionally to create, uh, I think, systems of mutual understanding. 
And it can be done for sure by culture, because here it's easier, I think, to create some understanding. It's more difficult politically. May I say, I was for my lifetime always a politician, but my impression at the end of my life is, politics is always behind the time. I think they are solving the problems uh, which have passed by. Uh, that's a pity. I'm not happy to say this, because obviously I failed my profession. Uh, and I think on this we have to concentrate and think uh, to move forward that we are able, I think, to solve the problems. And here I may say, uh, I think these problems we are becoming more critically and more and more and step by step and really every day. And what touches me very much is that we have not really the right feeling for. I think take Aleppo, only some days old. Huh? I think it is a total failure of all the political systems in which we are living. It is idiotic to speak about the human rights, which we are doing, because there are no human rights. And I think, yes, everybody is uh, doing a lip message, me too, in the moment, but what are we doing really in this direction? So far, coming back to the title, and I'm coming close to my end, I think uh, this mutual, better regional understanding might be a chance. But here we have to do a lot. Uh, I'm involved in the Danube Initiative, cooperation along the river Danube. It's very interesting. The Danube is the second longest river in Europe. The longest is Volga, but there's one state along the Volga. Uh, concerning the Danube, there are 14 states in the Danube River Basin. 14 states, it's quite a lot with a very differentiated <coughs> history. I give you one example what the result is. By Commissioner Hanna was asked to negotiate with the Rom uh, Romanians and Bulgarians. Uh, they do more cooperation over the river because the Danube is for 470 kilometers the border here. As I started, the uh, Romanian prime minister this time said to me, why shall we cooperate uh, uh, over the uh, river Danube? The river Danube is the border to the Ottoman Empire. This he told me, I think, six years ago. Huh? Still the border of the Ottoman Empire. What is uh, the message of this? We were not even able to create an understanding of history, because where the Ottoman Empire now? Maybe it's recreated by Mr. Erdogan, I don't know it. Uh, but I think here you can see what the difficulties are. That's, uh, from my side, a message uh, to this Institute for Cultural Diplomacy because it's extremely necessary, uh, I think, to move it in this direction. And so far, I'm quite happy uh, having been able to speak a little bit after religion because religion is here a very important part. No, religion is not a very important part. A very important part is how politics is using religion and the religious understanding. And may I say, my old friend uh, uh, Abbott uh, will excuse me, maybe sometimes also the churches and the religions have to do something more in this direction. But this is another question. Uh, so far, I think hopefully we are doing it. I'm ending, and hopefully for the organizers, I saved some time in favor of the agenda. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Buzek. Let's take one or two concise questions, if we can. Please. Thank you very much for your valuable insights, sir. I am Himanshu, an MBA student at Royal Holloway University of London. I had a question for you, sir. Like before World War II, I just read somewhere in a newspaper, like New York Times reported this thing, that similar situations were prevailing in the world, where individual, individualism was on the rise countries which were in the war before World War II, similar situations were prevailing. And at looking at the present scenario, I was just comparing that scenario to the present scenario. Do you think that the world is going on that way? Because you can see problems everywhere, be it in the Middle East, be it in the Asia, be it in the Europe. Do you think uh, we are still heading to the wrong way? Or can you suggest some possible solution to it? World wars uh, are a horrible event, without any doubt. But they, had, they are having, or they have had, 
some pedagogic results. I think the pedagogic result uh, after two world wars, one and two you have to put together, was for example the creation of the European integration process. I think here uh, all those who worked uh, like Schumann uh, and De Gaulle and Adenauer and uh, all uh, those who created it was, we have to create a system where we are avoiding uh, wars again. And this was a way of integration. May I tell you, I'm running around uh, twice a week uh, in the average, not only in Austria, but also in neighboring countries, speaking about the European Union. May I tell you for the moment that it is a sad message which I'm doing. You are not anymore allowed to come with the explanation of the European Union as a peace project. Because the younger generation is saying it's not true. You did nothing uh, to increase the peace. I want to say on the positive side, we had for 70 years peace after the Second World War. It, it, it is a tremendous result. But for the moment, we are creeping in another direction. And I'm always saying, and I'm extremely uh, concerned uh, doing this message, for my feeling we are at the beginning of the Third World War. It's not anymore the way it was done in the past. Emperor Franz Josef of Austria declared the war against Serbia, and then everything started. And it is a lot like Hitler said uh, uh, 1939, since 545, we are shooting back concerning Poland. Now it's creeping in in our society. And it is happening at the railway station Atocha, it's ha happening at the subway of London, it's happening at the concert hall in Paris, and then and, and I think endless you can continue. And I think uh, we, we, are, we are not really able to create a, a real behavior for this. Still we are thinking in division lines, huh? and not really coming together. And we are extremely happy if we can blame uh, here the others. Uh, I think in a certain way, and I'm saying it especially also for my country, being very critical on this subject, foreign politics is for the moment used for inner politics. I think uh, foreign ministers, including my own foreign minister, is appearing on the scene, giving messages that he get more votes at home at the next national elections, but not solving uh, any problem. I think it is quite usual, big partners were speaking about inner affairs of Austria. We have some ministers always appearing in the Austrian TV. The European Union has to do. And I always want to ask them, what did you do in the last meeting? Did you propose something? What is our contribution in this direction? I think I cannot anymore see this message on the TV. Uh, the European Union shall do. Who is the European Union? We are all for the Europeans, the European Union, even those who are not in the European Union, for sure. But we are quite happy, I think, to exclude them. I think here we heard the message concerning Ukraine. Yeah? They settled to get an arrangement concerning visa and so on and so on, guaranteeing that the Ukraine might not be a part of the European Union. I think it's a nice message to Putin. What are we getting on reward by Putin on this? Nothing. Yeah? And for sure, I think you, you cannot say that Ukraine is not Europe. I think even I would say Russia is partly uh, for sure Europe and also a part. I think we have to be self-critical that we are not, not doing the right discussions about the right subjects. We are going always uh, aside a little bit, uh, touching a little bit and then okay, and we will survive if it's not so important uh, and so on and so on. There's one famous saying in the Viennese language, everybody is thinking on him or herself. Only me, I'm thinking on myself. I think this we are doing in general. We are only thinking on myself. But the real question must be, who is myself? I think we are all in a general way. And it does not help if we are saying so and you are all agreeing on this, I think we have to continue and to raise other, other questions to uh, politics uh, and also to make other proposals in this direction. And these are cultural questions in, in general, because culture is a question, uh, what is the background, what is the content, what is the behavior, in which way we are doing it, and so on and so on. Bigger button, the answer was too long. Excellent, all right, maybe one more brief question and a brief response. I'm sure we've been inspired and provoked. 
If not, we can continue in the panel discussion later. So, okay, on that note, so I would like to ask you to please express our sincere gratitude to Dr. Buzek for having come.